seen with you. Who's going to see you? I can barely see you, Larry. Corwin's people are all over. All right, all right. What do you have for me? There's going to be a demonstration against Corwin's flood control project this afternoon. That's all over town. What else do you have? Nothing. Joe, I'm sorry. I can't give you anything concrete. I keep going back with nothing and it costs me three bucks to park in here. That's the best I can do. Corwin doesn't call me in for the critical strategy sessions, even after all this time I've been busting my butt for him. All right, all right. Just give me something, anything, from a highly placed source on the supervisor's staff. It won't be traceable to you. Well, let me think about it. Okay, how about the easy stuff? Like, what's the atmosphere at his campaign headquarters? Confident. Corwin confident of re-election. This is great stuff you're giving me, Larry. Look, you asked me, I told you. Okay, okay, take it easy. I appreciate anything you can give me. It might turn into a lead. Yo, yeah, well, look, I gotta get back now. Wait, wait, I have one more question. The least you can do is validate. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, no, come on. Hey, oh. you know, it's really not much fun editing your copy when you're standing over my desk. Oh, but you're paring it down to the bare bones. And it's better. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Liz Harrison. Hi. Hi, Lou, your new city editor. I've heard a lot about you, Lou. They talk about me all the way up in Sacramento? Well, no. Mr. Hume talked a lot about you down here. Charlie, please. <sighs> Art Donovan, assistant city editor. Hi. I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you. This is Billy Newman, general assigned reporter. Very nice to meet you. And to meet you. Thank you. Now, I read your Sacramento stuff for the Chronicle. The series you did on Jerry Brown was really terrific. We all read that, didn't we? No. I can just bet it was terrific. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to this. But I have to tell you, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I hear that L.A. is a very difficult city to write about. No, no, not really. At least the people are friendly and the language is easy once you get the hang of it. <laughs> no, uh, I guess I mean it's kind of hard to get past the cliches. But L.A. is the only city where you see men on the streets wearing more jewelry than the women. huh? With cuter behinds, too. Let me show you to your desk, Liz. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. You're talking about her writing, of course. Of course. The word I get from Sacramento is she's a pistol. Hmm? Is that right? Do you guys mind? I mean, I am here. Billy, I'm sorry. Shouldn't be talking that way in front of her. Why don't you leave? <laughs> Liz Harrison, huh? How'd we get her? I've been reading her stuff, and I finally talked Charlie into trying to get her. It's really a coup. He literally stole her out from under the Washington Post. They were just getting ready to make her an offer. Right, girl. Mm. She's as sharp when you talk to her as when you read her. We gotta find something really good to put her on. I'm thinking maybe the supervisor's race. No, 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 no. Rossi's already on that. You know, you were the guy who wanted me to bring her down here. Now let's use her. I think Rossi's going dry on this assignment. I know he's going dry on this one. He's not going to be happy being replaced. I'm not happy about the job that he's doing. We're all here today because we don't want to see the special character of our neighborhood destroyed. Supervisor Corwin wants to build a flood control project here. We don't need flood control. We don't need the county coming in here with their bulldozers chopping down trees and putting up chain-link fences. All the people from the media here already know the city council has voted to oppose this project. The city engineer has come out against this project. The Department of Public Safety has recommended against this project. And now today, we have 600 signatures on this petition, which we intend to present to Supervisor Corwin. <laughs> Guy. Oh, Supervisor Corwin. He's up for re-election. 
Now he's got all those city officials against him. Now you don't understand how it works here. He's got them outnumbered. And L.A. County supervisors like a king. That's why Corwin gave up his job as state senator four years ago to become a supervisor. I'll say this. The guy's got guts. Corwin, right into the lion's den. I don't usually make a habit of crashing parties. <laughs> I came here today because I know how strongly all of you feel about this issue. Then you've changed your mind? I have a duty as your supervisor to the people of this community, and one of the first duties of government is to protect its people. Now, I've lived in this area for 43 years, and I know the kind of devastating flooding that a heavy rain can cause. I remember the Tiger Tail Canyon flood of 1968 when three people died in mudslides, and I know that this picturesque, trickling little stream can, in one of our rains, turn into a raging torrent. And if one person, one child, should die in a flood which could have been... When he leaves, I, I want you to get in the way of Keene and the other aides so I have an opening to get to the supervisor. Shame on you. Now, I just wanted to tell you, face to face, how I felt about this. Now, let's go. Supervisor, why do you feel there's a flood danger here when the Department of Public Safety doesn't? Ask them. I have asked them. You haven't explained why you know more than the city's own engineers. Is this one of your usual tactics, Mr. Rossi, trying to ride someone to get a story that isn't there? Look, if you can't answer... I have nothing to say to the press, which I haven't just said to my constituents in person. What do you get? Zip. The last thing we need is another picture of him in his damn economy car. Did Rossi get anything that we didn't see on television on that homeowner's protest in Sycamore Canyon? What you saw is what he got. So once again, a city election is slipping through our fingers. Why we get better coverage on the president in Washington than on what is happening in our own backyard is beyond me. Corwin's got all the moves and his opponent didn't have any. Thomas? His best move is falling flat on his face. Poor guy, he just can't seem to do anything to make news. Just to keep you posted, I had dinner with the DA last night. Well? Yeah, he tells me his office has been getting a lot of heat about the nursing home situation again. Some of the things that have happened in them have caused a lot of complaints. Like what? Like deaths. That does tend to upset people. Okay, now I want Sacramento and City to be talking to each other about this as it starts coming in. Just a little cooperation. Okay, fellas? Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ah, Lou, just a minute. Yeah, Charlie? What I was talking about earlier, my feelings on this supervisor's election, let's swing Rossi over to something else and put Liz Harrison on it. I'll leave you to break it to him. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Cleaning up your desk. That's good. That's good. I wish everyone around here would be that organized. I'm leaving, Lou. Quitting. Ah, oh, come on, Rossi. You're not quitting. I can get a job in any newspaper in this country. A newspaper where I'll be respected. You're respected here. I've been shifted off the Corwin campaign arbitrarily. Uh, not arbitrarily. Your relationship with Corwin has deteriorated to a point where it is counterproductive. What point? He hates your guts. You hate his guts. Everyone knows it. Look, I was working on something, all right? I had a contact prime, all softened up. He's on Corwin's staff, and if Corwin keeps kicking him around, he'll be spilling his guts out. A nice thing would be if you would use him to give Liz some help on this. What? After you took me off the story, are you kidding? You are working on the same paper. Not anymore. Rossi, you... You're not leaving. I'm leaving. You love it here. I'm miserable here. You wouldn't love it if you weren't miserable. Sorry, Lou. I got a plum assignment for you. Forget it. Something you'd love to get your teeth into. What? Something good. Something terrific. If you stay. Find me something. 
Well, this just came in. The DA's finally moving on that nursing home deal. Any specific charges? Well, the ones they're coming down on are badly run with substandard sanitary conditions, inedible food, lack of medical attention. Thank God. How wonderful. Hello? Uh, I'm looking for a situation for my mother. See, she's been living with us for five years, but my wife and she aren't getting along that well. So I thought I should look into a place where Mom might be more happy with people her own age. Lou, I have something for you. I didn't want to take the time to write a memo. What do you have? Corwin has been getting a lot of static on this flood control project. Uh, nothing that would really hurt his chances, but an embarrassment. Well? He's backing off. He's going to stop pushing for it? Well, he said he hadn't read the city engineer's report before, and that someone on his staff hadn't briefed him fully on it, so he changed his mind. That's great. That's great stuff. Yeah, I guess it shows he can admit when he's wrong, huh? Kind of refreshing. Huh. I sort of like a guy who can own up to his mistakes these days. Good work, Lee. Well, it's not that much, but it's a start. Oh, don't go getting modest on us. <laughs> All right, I won't. I think I'm gonna like working for you guys. Everybody does. We're sweethearts. Rossi? Yes, Lou? You've done the spade work, and you have a pipeline to Corwin that might be useful to Liz. She could really make it pay off. Forget it. Rossi? All right. But I want you to remember this. Seems you're making progress with Corwin. Some. Look, I've got a guy fairly close to him there, but not happy. Next time Corwin steps on his toes, he's going to be ready to talk to me so I can feed you. Thanks, Joe. And I really do better when I develop my own sources. Sort of uh, helps me get a fresher angle, you know? Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. himself on the flood control project. I don't know any of this for sure, but you hear things. What have you been hearing, Larry? Corwin has connections to a certain couple of contractors, the ones who would be doing the job. He didn't want it coming out in an election year, so he pulled back. I see. Now look, that's not solid. Oh, I understand, Larry. How's it going down there? Are they treating you all right? Eh, yeah, same old stuff. I hear there are going to be some changes made after that flood control screw-up. That's what I hear. May have to ask you to keep your ears open for any jobs. That bad, huh? If I'm lucky. So Corwin is dumping two of his top advisors. And now the whole town will be full of speculation as to who is getting the ax and who is moving up. Except that our speculation will turn out to be right. You got names? The guys who are going are Blandis and Mitchell. And then Corwin's promoting uh, when he announces it day after tomorrow. Some guy who hasn't been in the spotlight very much. Um, Larry Keene. Keene? He couldn't be promoting Keene. You sure? I'd stake my career on it. Hey, you're always staking your career on something. Nice work. Lou? Mm. Listen, Lou. I'm going to do something I have never done before. I'm going to reveal the source, who my contact with Corwin is. You did that once before. The Rose Parade story. Okay. For the second time in my life, I'm going to reveal a contact. The memory of this guy. Larry Keene is the guy I told you about. You mean the guy who, according to you, was disgruntled? Who was about to get bumped? Yes. No wonder Liz wanted to develop her own sources. Vivian, meet Jack Efros, our Sacramento man. Jack started down here. What was it, 15 years ago? We're old friends. Now, don't give away our secret, Vivian. Gotcha. Tell me about nursing homes. Well, I hear something's gonna break. Up there? It depends on who decides to run with it first. 
A lot of fast buck operators got into the business in the 60s when the governor cut back the mental health program. All those people who were turned out of state hospitals had to have some place to go. And it's really a big business. Three and a half billion dollars nationally. How do you get inside a home? With an inspector. Ms. Liz. You know her? Oh, sure. She was covering Sacramento. I see she's been getting some of your assignments. Her byline's been on the supervisor campaign pieces. Yeah, she's mopping me up. I have to admit it, the stuff she got on Corwin in two days is better than anything I could pry out of him in a month. Well, sure. What do you mean, sure? Well, she knows him from Sacramento. When he was state senator, she was covering the Capitol. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Seems to me I ran into them a couple of times and they were having dinner. Newman, tell me if this sounds like sour grapes. Liz Harrison was tight with Corwin when he was in Sacramento. She comes down here in five minutes. She's getting great stuff on his campaign. Now, that starts to look to me like uh, she could be using... What? The fact that she's a woman, he's a man. I think you're right. That there's something going on there. That it sounds like sour grapes. Why do women always get this? If I pick up some good information, everybody wants to know who I called into bed with to get it. Well, maybe a woman does have a certain advantage. Are you kidding? Are you going to tell me that's how I broke the Nazi story, or the East L.A. gang story, or the piece I did on Jesuit priests? This isn't the same as those stories. How? How is it different? Look, just forget I asked. Sanitary conditions? Well, it wasn't really sanitary, but that would usually just get a reprimand, maybe a fine. Here, let me show you something. Here. What are you showing me a closet? They had an old lady here. She was about oh, 75. I met her once. Mean, nutty. She was a real pain in the neck. But they had a way of handling her. They locked her in this closet. She was alone, no meals. They figured that would settle her down. You gotta be kidding me. No. Now she settled down. While she was in there, she had a heart attack and no one knew it. When they opened the door, she was dead. I have an interview tomorrow with Gordon Thomas. I was uh, thinking of doing a piece contrasting the two campaign styles, uh, Corwin and his major opposition. Good idea. Good idea. So, everything going okay? Los Angeles isn't such an impossible place, is it? No. No, I, I really like it. I'll tell you one cliche I found that was true, though. You have to have a car or you are dead. I really resent this hour. I'm going to have to waste going home on the bus right now. Yeah. You have to have a car. Yeah. Then I have to learn how to drive. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Liz. Yeah? Wait. I'm all through here. I'll give you a lift home. Serve us with a smile. Good night, Lou. Thanks a million. Good night. See you tomorrow. How are you at accepting lavish praise? There. Yours is the best place I ever worked. Okay, okay. And I think it has a lot to do with the kind of man you are. That's enough. You are really one of the most... Get out! This is a terrific assignment for any reporter, but it'd get it for your very first. Hi. It's hard to keep you waiting. Oh, wow, what a day. I've got to get a car. You can't exist in this city without one. 
Doesn't have to be anything fancy, mind you. Just something with four wheels that goes when you press the pedal. Uh, why don't we not go out tonight? I can fix her something here. Fine. We'll stay here. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. something that just may be fantastic yeah i got your memo on the old lady who died in the closet this is something else better what could be better than an old lady dying in a closet this conversation is getting a little weird i've been trying to find out who's making money on these nursing homes the ones that are mismanaged mm -hmm. some of the arrows point back to a certain county supervisor archer corwin liz what do you need her for she's covering corwin yeah yeah, Lou. Listen to this. Go ahead. Some of Corwin's money might be tied up in the worst-run nursing homes. Do we have him nailed? It's not that simple. It might be his money. It might be from a blind trust or some other arrangement where he can claim he's not accountable. Yeah. Corwin's the kind of guy who would probably leave himself a hole to slip out of. That's why I need some more time, a few days at least, to run it down. Okay, stay on it. Uh, what's Corwin's position on nursing homes? He talks generally about his concern for senior citizens, and from what I can tell, they support him totally. That's about it. All right, let's move ahead on this. You two swap information. You got anything for me? No, you got anything for me? No. Good. Isn't it wonderful seeing them get along so well? Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. Time's just too tight. Yeah, but I think you're gonna want to respond to some of this information. It involves nursing homes in the county. Nursing homes? That's right. What do you want to meet? I told you, Joe. At this point, my time is too tight. Yeah. I guess it would be, with your new job and all. I got something nice, Lou. Real nice. Good. I can always use something nice. Supervisor Corwin is opening an investigation into the management and regulation of, ta-da, nursing homes. Corwin? He's always been philosophically opposed to government investigations. I guess he felt this was just too important to let pass. Senior citizens make up a very large part of his constituency. Mm. Besides, I think he's genuinely concerned about the situation. Did I hear right? Corwin is going to be looking into nursing homes? That's what Liz says. Oh, no. This is just what I didn't need. I need more time. What do you think his game is? You can ask him yourself. He's coming here to the paper today to talk to you and Charlie. Hmm. She told him. She tipped him off about what was going to come out. She is helping him beat us to the punch. Why do you think something like that? Because how else would he find out? He would find out from somebody he knew in the DA's office, in the County Department of Health, in the Mayor's office, in the Attorney General's office. I'm running off fingers, Rossi. Did either of you ever have an older relative you were especially close to? Sure. Well, for me, it was my grandfather. But his last years were very difficult. But of course, in those days, it isn't like now. We didn't automatically stick older people in homes. They stayed with the families. It's true. But we were very poor. My mother had to work. There was no way that she could handle my grandfather, because at that point he needed a lot of attention. So we put him in a home. I must have been seven or eight. And I was terribly upset. But my mother told me that he'd be all right, because where he was going, they treat him just like family, and that's the key. I think all nursing homes should be treating their residents just like family. Pretty risky stand to take in an election year, isn't it? Well, I'm here to make a pitch for this problem, to get maximum attention from your newspaper. I have one of my best reporters doing that right now. Then you've anticipated me. This pitch wasn't even necessary. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you.
You know, I think cooperation between elected officials and the media is the best strategy for correcting the abuses that exist in this area. Thanks for taking the time to come by. Thank you for giving up your valuable time to listen to me. You know, it always amazes me. When you get politicians in private, they sound just like politicians. Well, she is covering his campaign. Come on, Rossi. Should they act like strangers? Yeah, right. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. Thanks again, Lou. I promise. If I don't get a car soon, I'll ask somebody else for a lift home. Lou, there's something on my mind. What is it? I'm... A little uncomfortable with this assignment. Why? When you put me on the Corwin campaign, I didn't realize I was bumping someone. I think it's caused some hostility. Come on. No. No, really. With Rossi. Maybe with some of the others. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, maybe it would be better if you put me on something else. Uh, hey. You've been in the newspaper business a few years. You know how reporters are. I have never felt vibes like this before. If it starts to get to you, just remember, I am in your corner. I hope so. I felt like I had to say something, though. Okay, now you've said it. Just keep up the good work. I don't know how to tell you how much I appreciate everything you've done for me, but I really do appreciate it and all the nice things. It's terrific. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> analysis piece by Liz? Corwin is electric, fast-moving, attractive. His opponent, Thomas, is uh, studious, plotting, professorial. Boy, they really buried the guy. Is there anything in there that isn't true? Thomas is a dull campaigner. Oh, she's really skewered him, Billy. Just because she handles words well. <laughs> Since when is good writing a crime? Billy. I had drinks the other night with a couple of people from the Times and a guy from Channel 2. They felt our coverage of this election is slanted. What exactly is everybody talking about? The rumors about Liz and Corwin. And that's all they are, aren't they? Rumors. That's still reason enough to take her off the story. If we don't, people will stop believing anything they see in the trip. Oh, that's great. And what about the principle of innocent until proven guilty? Nobody here has one shred of evidence to show that Liz and Corwin are involved. I do. Gesundheit. Thank you. Well, Rossi? I got the sniffles finding this out. I saw Corwin. 
go into Harrison's apartment last night about 11 p.m. You were spying on her? Oh, my God. Rossi. No, I was following Corwin. Oh, sure. I was. That's really low, Rossi. Look, hate me for spying or for telling you about Harrison, but you can't have both. I was there till 5 in the morning, and he still hadn't come out. I wonder she finds him a more interesting campaigner. Well, we have to tell Lou and Charlie. They have a right to know. It's obvious what we have to do, but I'm not going to say it. I'm tired of being the heavy in this thing. I'll tell them. Anyway, as much as we hate carrying this kind of gossip, we felt as if we had no choice except to tell you. Well, this accusation you're making is very serious. It's one of the most drastic charges that can be made against a news report. We thought you'd want to hear about it. What I'm hearing is a lot of talk, but there seems to be something to it. I recommended Liz Harrison to Charlie because I read her stuff and it was good because she came highly endorsed. I'm not going to change my mind because of some rumors. That's right. Don't you think we checked around before we hired her? Nobody expressed one atom of doubt about her ethical standards. Charlie, it's very painful for us to come in here like this, but we're seeing everything we're trying to do on this newspaper suddenly put in real jeopardy. The public doesn't trust one of us, they won't trust any of us. <sighs> one bit of gossip, and you all come in here like a lynch mob. This isn't gossip, these are the facts. Facts? Yeah. The major fact around here is that a bright, talented reporter has done a better job than you on a story, and you're not used to that. That's not it. I don't fight that way, and you know it. This newspaper runs on trust. It's going to take a lot more than some sexual innuendo for us to forsake that trust. But, Lou... It's okay, Billy, thanks. Rossi Donovan. such fine speeches. We'd better find out what's going on. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. So, Joe, what's on your mind? Nursing homes. Somehow I expected that. I've been going through the public records. It seems clear that Cohen's got his own money in some of these homes. Now, the involvement's all shielded, filtered through different corporate fronts. But it is there, and it's going to come out. Mm-hmm. Do you care to respond? I knew the supervisor had some nursing home investments. So do a lot of people. My own family, in fact. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with putting money in something which is essentially designed to care for the sick and elderly. I'm not talking about the majority of these places, the ones that are well-run and legitimate, but the ones that are rip-offs. Well, that's why the supervisor is investigating those facilities, Joe. Okay, I've got your answer for the record. Now tell me how this is going to affect the campaign. I'm probably only a couple of steps behind the DA on this. It's got to throw a crowbar into your machine. And it sure gives Thomas the weapon he's been looking for to use against Corwin. Okay. Ah. Off the record now. Just between you and me. You'd never like something like this to happen before an election. How much will it hurt Paul? Not at all. He'll come through it. He'll have to throw somebody to the wolves, toss out a body for the press to tear apart. Corwin won't get scratched. You mean you'll sacrifice one of your own people? Come on, Joe. We're not virgins. We both know the way the game is played. You're taking the long way home this evening. Yeah, I like driving in the rain. Don't get much of a chance to do it out here. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. I think there's much more of a chance to talk. I need to know what's going on between you and Archer Corwin. He's running for re-election, and I'm covering the campaign. Beyond that? What do you mean, beyond that? What do you think I mean? That you both belong to the Book of the Month Club? Come on, Liz. There's been talk. You must know about it. Is there anything to it? I knew Corwin when he was a state senator in Sacramento. And since I've been down here, I've had dinner with him. 
we've seen each other. Are you involved with him? Hey, what is that? Next thing you'll be asking me if I'm sleeping with him. Is that what you're asking me? I don't believe this. I resent your asking me that, and I do not want to be put in the position of answering. I'm afraid you have to. That is something which is entirely personal. No, no, not entirely personal. When you're a reporter and he's the subject of your story. Okay, Lou. If you really want to know. No, I don't really want to know. I, I don't want to have anything to do with this. But I have to ask the question. Are you having an affair with him? Yes. You sure? <sighs> That's, uh... Not the kind of thing you can make a mistake about very easily. Was this going on in Sacramento, or did it start down here? Down here. Did it ever occur to you that maybe that involved you in a conflict of interest? Uh, well, Lou, since you seem to want to know all the details, no. At the time that this first happened, there were other things on my mind besides conflict of interest. Things like... Falling in love. Okay. But now, riding home after work, how does it look? It doesn't look like anything. But uh, here you are, with the uh, emotional reasons to be loyal to the guy, and he's giving you information. Lou, aren't you friendly with some of your new subjects? And don't they give you information? Don't you have dinner with a DA? Yes. Well, then. But I don't go to bed with him afterwards. Oh. Oh, I see. So, um, sleeping together, that's where the line is drawn then, huh? I don't know exactly where the line is. But if you've done that, you've crossed it. Gentlemen. Now, it's admirable that each of you is willing to take responsibility for this. But he doesn't solve the problem of what we're going to do about this mess. The damage has been done. We don't have any choice now. Uh, now, let's consider our options. There are none. We can take her off the story. It's too late now. If she'd come to Lou or me when this first started and told us honestly what was going on, maybe we could have. But now? You realize firing her will very probably ruin her career. She'll never work on another newspaper again. And if she stays here, nobody will ever trust the Trib's reporting again. Yes, Mr. Grant, I see. It's, it's inevitable. It is necessary. You think I like this? I hate when this happens to a bright, talented person. So do I. And I also hate the fact that I'm the one who has to tell her. I feel like we're putting a scarlet letter around this girl's neck. Sex is not the sin here, Mrs. Pinchon. That's right. An editor of mine once had a saying, which I'll clean up a bit. You can get romantically involved with elephants, but don't cover the circus. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I feel I have to share with the press and the public a piece of disturbing information which has come to my attention and which has given me a great deal of personal pain. You all know my close friend and trusted advisor, Larry Keene. Holy cow, I didn't see this one coming. Well, it's come to my attention that a member of Larry's family, not a close relative, but a relative nonetheless, has an interest in several of the nursing homes which have been under investigation. And while this does not imply any wrongdoing on Larry's part, and I want to stress that, in the present moral climate in politics, the mere appearance of ethical impropriety is as damning as the actuality. Therefore, Larry has offered his resignation. And I, with a deep sense of regret, have accepted it. Has this changed your opinion of Larry? Not one I own. I'm saddened by the loss of the services of a fine public servant, a close personal friend. And a great sacrificial lamb. Hello. 
I got a message to meet you here. Yeah, sit down. What are you drinking? I don't drink during the day. I still have work to do. Yeah. I like you, Liz. You're an extremely intelligent, a terrific investigator, an excellent writer. Wait a minute, Lou. There's a butt coming and all of that. <laughs> no buts. But there is some bad news. Yeah. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. I guess this was coming. I'm sorry. But you do understand. I'm not happy about it, but I understand that you have people you have to answer to. I'll say this. You're taking it well. So, uh... What's my next assignment? Next assignment? Liz, do you know what I'm telling you? Yeah, that I'm off the Coleman story. No, it's more than that. You're taking me off politics? Liz. Oh, God. I'm out, aren't I? to me bring me down here rearrange my whole life and then just toss me out like a dead fish you're a bright gifted girl but you did a dumb thing i didn't plan it this way lou i got to know archer and i fell in love with him i'm still in love with him it just happened you could have what i could have what never tried not to fall in love with somebody it doesn't work that way you could have told me. You could have asked off the story. I did. I asked to be put on something else. But you didn't tell me why. That's all you needed to do. I really wish you had. I just wanted to say, uh, sorry. No, you're not. All right, I'm not. You heard Corin dump Larry King. He did what he had to do? The greater good. That's right. The greater good being Corwin staying on his supervisor. That's right. You still believe in that guy, don't you? Yes, I do. Excuse me. Take it any way you want, but good luck. I mean that. What now? Oh, don't worry about me, Billy. I'll be okay. What will you do? Uh, I won't be a newspaper reporter. I can always write, as long as I'm uh, healthy, got a typewriter, and a sharp pencil. There are always magazines, maybe even uh, a book. I always thought I'd write a book about uh, California politics. You know, I just never had the time. Well, now I have the time. I've been a reporter for 15 years, Billy. That's plenty. And you won't miss it? Oh, well, I miss it. I gotta get out of here. I'll have to carry that. No, it's okay, really. I can manage. I'm done, Liz. Good luck, okay?
His girlfriend is found murdered and his house set on fire. Someone's out to drive Inspector Morse to the brink of madness on an all-new A&E mystery movie tonight. Now, a cop is pressured into accusing the wrong man of murder on Police Story, next on A&E.